let's now begin with our top focus story at the top of 11. This is what we are in fact talking about. The royal mess that seems to have been created right here in the country, in Kerala particularly, as the British Royal Navy's F-35 fighter jet, which has been in the limelight for being stranded at uh, Kerala's Thiruvananthapuram International Airport for nearly 20 days, will be partially disassembled and then transported back to the UK. The F-35's wingspan is too wide, we are told, to lift through the C-17 cargo bay doors, requiring the removal of its wings for transportation altogether. Now, before the transit fuel, hydraulic flu uh, the fluids and other liquids are to be drained to reduce the weight of the entire aircraft and also in order to avoid leaks. Additionally, we're also learning that sensitive components such as electronics, sensors, stealth coatings are carefully protected to prevent damage during the transit. Even Kerala tourism joined the fun because remember there have been so much of memes that are surrounding this F-35 that has been stranded in India for nearly 20 days. Now Kerala tourism ended up posting this message about the stranded British uh, fighter jet and this is what the post reads. Kerala, the destination you will never want to leave. So this is what is adding to the memes uh, that are surrounding the F-35. Now there will be a team that is going to be coming into the country to first assess the cause of this snag and then finally airlift uh, uh, this not no longer airworthy plane uh, by means of this cargo aircraft. Now this is what we are learning. Why is that transportation in that cargo aircraft really needed? The wingspan of the F-35 is too wide to fit through the C-17 bay doors. The C-17 is the cargo aircraft that is eventually going to be carrying this particular plane. F-35 also, we are told, requires partial disassembly if it is being transported. Eventually, that is what is going to happen because it is no longer airworthy. It cannot fly on its own. We're also learning that fuel, hydraulic fluid, are to be drained first. So what does it do? The drainage first, it is a requirement in order to reduce the entire weight of the fighter jet. And then it is also to ensure that it prevents any leaks during this flight. Also, we are learning that electronics, sensors are to be protected to prevent any further damage, wear and tear during that transit to the UK. That team for assessing the damage and finally airlifting that uh, F-35 fighter jet arrives in India only tomorrow, that is the 5th of July. And uh, we are of course waiting. And one particular uh, meme that is adding to the hilarious tweet that we see online is also the parking charges that the British will have to pay to India for keeping the fighter jet for 20 days in the country. Neetu Regu Kumar, who has been tracking all the developments on this bizarre story that's coming out of Kerala, is now with us on the broadcast. Uh, Neetu, so much has been said about this F-35 jet. They have not been able to assess what is the cause of the snag. Now they are saying hydraulic engine failure. Then they are also mentioning other things. And now finally, a partial dismantling in order to transport this jet altogether. Yes, from the time that is on uh, June 14th night at around 9.30 when this fighter jet landed at the Tiruvananthapuram airport, there has been a lot of twists and turns. Initially, it was said that it was due to low fuel that the fighter jet needs an emergency landing. That was a request that came into the Tiruvananthapuram airport and uh, permission was given for that. Initially, it was said that after refueling, the fighter jet will fly back, but that didn't happen. Then it was told that they have some technical issues mainly to do with the hydraulics of this. Seem to have lost that link with Neetu. We will uh, reconnect that line with my colleague. But before we do that, here's uh, Air Marshal Sanjeev Kapoor, the former DG Inspection and Safety at the Indian Air Force, who's now with us on the broadcast. Air Marshal Kapoor would like to understand what do you make of this entire story that's being played out? 20 days the British needed to even assess what has gone wrong with their F-35 fighter jet. It was in India, still is in India. The team only arrives tomorrow to finally transport it. It has to be carried. It's no longer airworthy. Uh, good morning to you and to your viewers. Uh, see, uh, this is a very complex aircraft. It is not a normal uh, state-of-the-art uh, fighter jet. It is a fifth-generation aircraft where each and every sensor and probe, including the surface, 
is special. So to access this aeroplane for any kind of servicing, you need first the dust proof environment. You need special slings, jacks, jigs, you know, cradles for it to be opened. Now I had uh, covered in your program earlier also, I have very serious doubts whether uh, at uh, Trivandrum in open, uh, this aircraft could be repaired. Hmm. It requires a special, uh, you know, tools and equipment to service that. Now, why they have taken 15 to 20 days uh, is uh, not sure. My guess is that the licenses and clearances will have to come from Lockheed Martin, which is the original equipment manufacturer. We call it OEM. The licensing must have been given to Royal Air Force. Yes. But the know-how and expertise would still be existing for handling this kind of a repair in a foreign country with the OEM, and that is the Lockheed Martin. Now, uh, my guess is that the C-17 would bring in the people uh, to get this uh, thing going, along with the personnel which you are saying, uh, the 40 of them, they will come and start dismantling this aircraft. Hmm. Like you were covering, uh, not only it reduces the weight when you remove fuel, oil and other, it is basically you are removing all the combustible elements which should not be a part of the aeroplane while they are being carried uh, on. Uh, the uh, F-35s have in the past been taken by C-17s. Hmm. Uh, uh, there have been instances in the past. So they would have the expertise and know-how. A typical wingspan of a F-35 is around 35 feet. Okay. And the maritime version which the Royal Air Force is using is about 43 feet. So the, the diameter of a C-17 is just about 18 feet. So it goes without saying that the wings and the uh, tail stabilizers and the fins, including the sensors, probes, antennas, undercarriage base will have to be dismantled. Hmm. The tire pressures will have to be adjusted for the aircraft height to fit into the cabin of a C-17, which is typically around... 12 to 12 and a half feet. But sir, while you're so, saying that everything is very obvious, there was an eventual dismantling that uh, needed to be done to even transport this fighter jet. Why were there earlier reports that were suggesting that this fighter jet will be transported as in is in the C-17 Globemaster? Because common sense, it cannot really fit in. How will it uh, squeeze in through the doors? What, what really went on uh, behind the, that kind of reportage, sir? No, I am not aware why it went through. Uh, this aircraft in the present configuration cannot fit into a C-70. That's for sure. That's for sure. Both by wingspan and uh, with the tail fin height. So this aircraft will have to be dismantled. Now, how much dismantling is required? And that's a totally professional thing. Uh, you know, you need absolute, absolute correct, uh, you know, uh, jigs, uh, jacks, cranes, telfers, uh, cradles to even approach and start working on this aeroplane. Hmm. With the monsoon around, uh, with this aircraft parked and open, that will be another challenge that how much uh, they would be willing to take this thing in open. Uh, would they cover it, uh, you know, by an artificial uh, covering or take it into an hangar or uh, look for a clear window wherein they can do the primary uh, removals and then uh, carry it on board a C-17? I'm not aware. This call would be taken by the technical team Okay. of the Royal Navy and the Lockheed, which arrives uh, as per your listing tomorrow. Okay. Air Marshal Kapoor, I request you to do stay on with us. Let's get in a word from our correspondent, Neetu Regu Kumar, who's now back with us on the broadcast. Neetu, about the arrival of this team from the UK, when is that slated to happen tomorrow? What time? And what is the timeline that they have given for assessment on assessing what exactly went wrong with the F-35 and eventually then dismantling it in order to be carried into that uh, C-17 Globemaster? See, uh, they have been uh, pretty guarded in their responses or in, even in the details coming out as, as to what happened with the F-35 or uh, what really went on. What we are understanding through sources is that a 40-member team is expected to come tomorrow uh, to uh, Thiruvananthapuram and they will be assessing this uh, F-35 what went wrong with this, uh, what is the issue, and if needed, after that, they will take the decision. At least this is what they have informed the airport authorities. Uh, that is the information that we are getting in. So a 40-member team is expected to reach uh, uh, Trivandrum tomorrow, and then they will be doing the assessment uh, what we understand. 
And Neetu, very quickly, that permission to land in, in Kerala in Thiruvananthapuram that was asked of by, by the pilot of this fighter jet, the reason that was given back then was low flu fuel or was it something more to it? No, the reason initially given was low fuel on 14th, uh, June 14th night at around 9.30, this F-35 landed. So the reason for that they sought for this emergency landing was low fuel. And initially it was told that after refilling the fuel, uh, for that also they require permission from the Indian government. So after that, they will be flying back. That was the initial uh, information that had come in. And they sought uh, an emergency landing due to low fuel. Okay, all right. Uh, Air Marshal Kapoor, is this a regular affair? Uh, does this sort of a thing happen? That there is a fighter jet which is coming in from the UK, which is in the Indian airspace for different reasons altogether. It, in fact, sends uh, uh, an emergency call because of apparent low fuel and a requesting of a permission to land. How do we string all of these things together? Why did it even happen? See, uh, when you fly, a lot of emergencies happen. And uh, it is a part of our uh, tactics and plans to look for a diversionary airfield. That's absolutely normal. There is nothing unusual about it. Okay. Uh, when we go for international exercises, when we fly across the countries, at each place along our leg, we have diversionary airfields. And that is to cater in case we have an emergency. Hmm. So that's absolutely no angle to it because the aircraft was operating, uh, operating close to our shores hmm. and it had an emergency. It could not have landed on the deck uh, because I'm sure along with low fuel, there must have been some other emergency for which uh, the hydraulics basically for benefit of your viewers are the essential parts uh, which is required for the undercarriage to be lowered mm. and for braking. For stopping the aircraft, you need brakes and that comes from hydraulics. So mm. if there is a hydraulic emergency coupled with low fuel, it is not advisable to go, uh, in my guess, I don't know the exact this thing, on board an aircraft carrier. Mm. So the pilot would have decided to come to Trivandrum. Now, after coming back, they would have thought that it's a normal uh, you know, uh, fuel snag and hydraulic may not be as serious. But uh, I'm sure when the technical teams have come and gone, I'm told a large number of people have come and inspected the whole thing. They would have realized that this repair uh, may not be possible on site hmm. because uh, the, of the reasons which I just covered before. Yes. So uh, the OEM would have been approached and contacted. The OEM in this case is U.S. Lockheed Martin. Hmm. So the U.S. Lockheed Martin would have given, uh, you know, necessary instruction because uh, remember, this is a totally, totally secure and, a, uh, you know, an aircraft which the OEM would not like uh, to be, you know, shared, discussed, opened, and given access to a large amount of people because of obvious reasons. Hmm. So they would not want on a foreign land this aircraft stripped open and, you know, uh, so the call would and have yet, been... And yet they left it stranded for nearly 20 days. That is something that is rather inexplicable because there is a lot of answering that the US needs to be do doing in this particular case, bringing it a lot of global shame because it is one of their fighter jets. UK has been sitting idly by and they, in fact, uh, it's only after 20 days that this 40 people team is going to eventually arrive on the 5th of July. What explains this delay, sir? My guess is that uh, we are dealing with a lot of agencies to get the necessary approvals. The aircraft belongs to Royal Navy, so they would have approached their government. The, the Royal Navy, in that case, the U.S. Uh, correction, the U.K. Defense Ministry would have approached the U.S. Uh, government. The U.S. government, in turn, would have consulted the Pentagon, who in turn would have approached uh, Lockheed Martin. The uh, first thought process would have been to uh, fly it out or you know seek help from a nearby U.S. base which operates F-35s, which are in say close to Diego Garcia or uh, in the Pacific. Then the next call would have been taken to you know take it to some place from where uh, the U.S. team could come. So uh, yes, you are right uh, that 21 days, 20 days is too long a period, and especially at the period uh, time when uh, uh, the U.S. is wanting to sell this aircraft to India, the optics is not good. Uh, I agree with you here. So, what happens next, sir? What does Lockheed Martin uh, really go ahead and do? Will they, will their stakeholders or members from from there, will be a part of this forty-member team that arrives tomorrow in India? You yes. think so? I'm, I, I, I am a hundred percent sure that the Lockheed Martin team would be, you know, uh, uh, accompanying 
hmm. the royal navy team who would uh, be arriving and in my guess it will take uh, you know uh, c- a couple of days it is not going to happen fast it is going to take a few days hmm. for it to be dismantled uh, a day or so plus uh, for it to be loaded and then the aircraft would be in a condition uh, the, the c17 uh, would okay. be in a condition to be taken away uh, we like i covered it's a monsoon period hmm. it's parked in the open it's it's a coastal place so the other challenges of uh, weather and environment would also play a role in how fast uh, things unfold and uh, we are able to take this aircraft out this lad to the fee for the royal navy sir because uh, we are getting in word from tiruvananthapuram that they need to be paying parking charges Oh, that, that's that's a, a very minor problem they would be looking at. <laughs> the major problem, of course, uh, would be to take this machine back to wherever they wish to carry for repairs. Mm. Mm. Uh, how long are you giving exactly, sir, for for this dismantling to practically happen, and then eventually the transportation in the C-17? My guess, three to four days okay. after the team arrives. Okay. All right.